In this video, we'll continue our exploration of programming languages and how they work by understanding data types. So far, we've talked about syntax and the nature of rules that you need to be wary about when working with a programming language. Computer programs in their fundamental sense accept data for processing and return a result. For instance, a program to compute the total payable cost of a product based on taxes and discounts. Or a program to compute the distance between two points on the map and so on. In each of these cases, the program needs data to be able to produce results. Now, to ensure our program correctly processes data, the programming language needs to know the type of data it is expecting. For example, a person's age is a number, whereas a person's name is, well, not a number, but a series of English language characters. Languages need to know the data type associated with the values that they need to work with to correctly process the data and to define the amount of memory to use for storing the data. Every programming language includes a host of built-in data types known as primitive data types that you can use to express data. Let's explore some of the common categories of data types that programming languages offer. First up are numbers. So everything from cost of a product, number of days and weeks, temperature, number of emails in your inbox, the amount of money in your bank, your credit card number, all of these are examples of numbers. Numbers are often broken down into two or more discrete types. For example, integers are whole numbers that do not include a decimal point. These are great for expressing the components of a date, such as the day, month, year, your area zip code, phone numbers, bank account numbers, and so on. Likewise, floating point numbers or floats are used to express numbers with decimal points. So, the value of pi, temperature, cost of a product, dimensions of an object, distance between two points, amount of money, and financial data, and so on. Next up, we have strings, which are essentially a group of characters, and you can use strings to represent names, social media posts, emails, email IDs, postal addresses, blog posts, and virtually anything that contains alphanumeric data. These are usually expressed within a pair of single or double quotes. Some languages also include a type called char or char, which can be used for denoting a single character. Our next data type is called Boolean, named after George Bull, an English mathematician who in his short lifespan of just 49 years published several papers on mathematics, including the mathematical analysis of logic, which formed the basis of Boolean algebra, which is critical in computing. Boolean values can either be true or false, and while this may not sound much, it is in fact quite useful when you need to express a switch, for instance, which should either enable or disable processing of some data. You also have decisions such as, is the temperature less than 15? Or is this user registered? Or are you above 18 years of age? The answer to all these and similar questions can be expressed in a yes or no or true or false. Decision making in fact relies on Boolean true or false values as you will soon discover. Our final data type is actually quite interesting because it refers to the absence of data. Computer languages will use keywords like null, none, undefined and other mechanisms to express the lack of data for processing which is important to ensure your program only gets into action when there is data to process. Now, most languages will offer several more discrete data types that you will discover when you start to learn a programming language. However, the ones we've discussed are at a high level, the most common and primitive data types that you'll find. We get questions all the time from folks who've stored data types incorrectly. They ask all kinds of integrity and manipulation questions and we always, always, always start our response with you shouldn't have done that. 
Understanding the different data types allows programmers to design computer applications more efficiently and accurately. Here's a great way to get started and learn hands-on. With our outcome-based immersive learning approach, we are fundamentally disrupting the way new age technologies are learned. You'll get to learn, practice, assess, gain insights on your learning, and personalize your learning journey on our easy-to-navigate AI-powered skill-building platform, Prism. Stay tuned for more such videos and explore more about how you can equip yourself with immediately demonstrable in-demand skills that will help you get job ready. And don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon to get notified so you don't miss out on our upcoming videos.